Hey, you guys, it's Matt Frazier, the psychic medium. Come on and enjoy me. I'm going to be talking to you guys tonight about something that you're really going to be interested in, something that you really are going to want to hear. It's going to make you very happy. And that is that we truly never die. And there's a reason for this. So what's so amazing is that being a psychic medium, I don't fear death like the normal person. And there's a reason for that. Because I talk to souls every single day that are living amazing lives on the other side, that are able to watch over us every day, that are fully healed. And I want to share with you why that is. And I also want to share with you what I've learned from the souls on the other side, because there is a secret. And that is that we truly never die. It's just a change in worlds. So I want to explain to you exactly how that is possible and what the other side has shared with me about what happens when we actually die, what we see here in this world and what actually is going on behind the scenes. And first of all, I see so many of you guys are here right now. I see Mikey is here. I see Vicky is here. I see the Manja 84 is here. And I also see AS is here from Canada. And I also see that Susan is here as well. And I see that Gabriella is here. And I see that, oh my God, so many of you guys are here on Facebook. Come on in, come on in, come on in. Let's get started. And first of all, I wanted to come on and to talk about this topic for a couple of different reasons. I see Michelle is here from Facebook. Hey, Michelle, because so many of you guys write to me every single day and you're like, Matt, I'm just afraid. I'm just afraid. I'm so afraid of death. I'm so afraid of dying. How is it that you know? Can you explain to me what the process is like? And I want to share with you guys everything that the other side has shared with me because it's so inspirational to hear what actually happens at the end of our life. It doesn't have to be something that we fear. It's something that we can actually look at and understand, oh my God, we have a lot of work to do here in this world, right? Because what I've learned from the other side is this. And by the way, these are all the tour dates. If you guys want to see me live, if you haven't heard, I'm coming to Laughlin, Nevada, Santa Rosa, California. I'm coming to Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, Atlantic City, New Jersey, led you to Connecticut, Sacramento, California, and Las Vegas. So for all of you guys asking me, Matt, where, are, where can I come and meet you? Where are you giving readings? All of these places, I will be coming to give live readings up close and personal. Just go to meetmattfraser.com to reserve your spot. So first of all, let's talk about it. Why we never die. Well, first of all, what I want you to know is that when we are born here in this world, there is another part of our body that we know nothing about, right? That we have to discover while we're here on earth. And that is that we're actually born with a soul. And your soul looks exactly like you do. Your soul is the second version of you. So imagine if you had another version of you, a backup version of you that could never be broken, that could never get sick, that nobody could ever touch, right? Well, you have that. The same way that you keep important documents and papers and files and memories safe in a safe, right? The same thing or a lockbox, the same thing happens deep within you. Deep inside of us is like this little lockbox, I like to think of it as, with our soul. And your soul is the most important part of you. Your soul is what allows you to feel things on a deeper level. Your soul is what keeps you connected. It's like an antenna that keeps you to the spirit, keeps you connected to the spirit world, to the other side and to your loved ones in spirit. Your soul, it's what's sending you messages all the time when your loved ones are trying to come through to you. And your soul is the backup version of you. What do I mean by that? I mean that your soul looks just like you do, but What's really cool is that no matter what happens to your body here in this world, your soul remains intact. So if you're missing a finger, once you get to the other side, that, that finger is restored. If you're missing legs, back on the other side, you can walk and you can move. Why is it? Because nothing can affect your soul here in this world. And what's really cool is that our memories are actually stored in two places. Every single life event, every single memory, every single life moment Get stored in your brain here in this world and your soul for when you go to the other side. Your memories are stored in two places, you guys. And that's the reason why when I'm connecting with souls on the other side that pass up Alzheimer's, dementia, brain issues, stroke, they can remember so much more clearly than they did here in this world. Or some people may not have had a good memory or you may have blocked out or forgotten some of your childhood or some of your life. Well, guess what? When you go to the other side, you're able to remember every hour, every second, every minute, every moment because of the fact that you're not just remembering it here, you're remembering it on a soul level. You see, your soul keeps track of your journey here on earth. It's almost like, you know how our phones, our phones have, well, I don't know if you know this, I don't ever pay attention to mine, but our phones, phones have 
um, a step tracker in it, right? And it also, I somebody was just showing me that you can go back through your history and like look on your phone to see all the places that you were. Like somehow your iPhone keeps track of your steps. It keeps track of all the places that you visit, right? Like different streets, different uh, places that you pass by, all of those things. You don't know that it's happening, but it's also being stored in your phone. Well, that same thing is happening with your soul. Every single step that you take here in this world is stored in your soul. Every connection that you have is stored in your soul. Every memory that you have is stored in your soul. Because our body, think of it this way, our body is left here in this world. But it's just that. It's only a body. When your soul leaves this world, you look exactly like you look. You have your features. You have your identity. You have your personality. And most of all, you have your memories. And that's the most amazing thing. Because what I want you to know is this. Oh my God, thank you so much. So Becky goes, Matt, you were sent to me by a family member. I don't know who. Well, listen, I like to think that all of you were sent to me by a family member and you don't know who, right? I don't think that anybody just finds out about me, right? I think that your loved ones in spirit have gone and allowed me to get in front of all of your eyes, all of your computers. And I am so happy that you're all here with me because what's so beautiful is I feel like that we cross paths for a reason. And I know this because one of the things is that when we also go to the other side, what's revealed to us is why we met certain people within our life. And I'm hoping that I'm a good person that you met that's going to help to let you know that you can still talk to your loved ones because of that soul connection. So here's the reason why we never die, right? When we're born, our soul enters into our body and our body gets older over time. But what's really cool is this, is that at the end of our life, when we leave our body here, your soul transitions onto the other side. And it's not just your memories that are stored in your soul, your appearance is as well. And I want to go through that because a lot of you guys ask me, well, Matt, what do you look like in heaven? What does a soul look like? So that's a really tough question to go and to answer because your soul looks just like you, but all years of you. So from the moment that you were one years old, all the way up to the day you die, may you live to be a hundred, right? All of those years in between, have versions of you. So the same way when you're older and you go through a photo album and you're like, oh my God, this was me at one years old. This was me at two years old. This is me at three years old. This is me at four years old. That same, that, that same image that you see in a photo album is also stored within here. So when your loved ones go to the side, what's so beautiful is that they can go and change and be whatever age that they want. If they want to appear as a child, you can go back to your child self. If you want to appear as a middle-aged woman, you can go to a middle-aged woman. If you want to go to, to, to be, I shouldn't say middle-aged woman, but excuse me, middle-aged version of yourself, right? Or if you want to say the older version of yourself, you can. But the thing is, is that when you transition onto the other side, you get to choose out of that photo, out of, out of that book, what your soul looks like. Now, everybody would say, well, Matt, wouldn't everybody just go to being 21 again or 30, 30 again or forever 35, right? But I've seen it happen different ways. Or people will say to me, Matt, you know, when we get to the other side, is it that all of a sudden we can drop 10 pounds or drop 50 pounds? Can we be skinny on the other side? I never get to be skinny here in this world. The true answer is that you could. But what I can tell you is that most souls don't. And I'm going to tell you why. Because here in this world, we're vain, right? Here in this world, we think about our appearance all the time. We choose the clothes we're going to wear and how we're going to look. And we're so worried about what people think about us and being a certain weight and so on and so forth, right? But the thing is, is that when it comes to our transition to the other side, your loved ones choose to come back to a part of their body or a time in their body in which they were best remembered. So for example, there was this one woman that I was reading for. And her grandmother was larger than life. And it's funny because when she was here in this world, she always used to say, oh, I wish I could be skinny. I wish I could be skinny. I would love to be skinny. Oh my God, one day if I could just be skinny. And her family thought that when she came through in a reading that she would be skinny in heaven, right? But the thing is, is that that's not what people loved about her. They loved, you know, how beautiful she was just in her own body how she was, her big, larger than life presence, right? Is how she still was on the other side, both within her body and within her soul. So what was amazing was this, is that she hadn't changed a bit because when she got to the other side and she looked back on her life and she saw all the different moments of her, yes, yeah, she could go and be a hundred pounds and in a bikini if she wanted to, but she realized one thing, or the mother realized when she went to the other side that everybody loved the bigger version of her. 
the natural version of her, the true version of her. So just, she decided to keep that weight in heaven. Does that make sense? So I see this happen all the time. I see it happen all the time where sometimes I may be talking to somebody who, you know, may have been, may have done something different within their life here in this world, right? Or been a certain way at the end of their life that maybe they weren't proud of, or maybe they didn't realize, but then on the afterlife, they, 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 they're the exact same way. And let me just t tell you a story because I'm, I feel like I'm not explaining this correctly. There was this woman, I'll never forget this reading you guys. I will never forget this. There was this grandma that I was reading for her, God rest her soul. And when she came through, right, she had gone and had chin hairs, okay? And her family member, uh, members never said anything to her, even though she used to shave because they didn't want to hurt her feelings. But she, they, she, they always remembered, oh my God, do you remember grandma's chin hairs? Do you remember grandma's chin hairs? Well, she had the chin hairs, you guys. And don't you know that when she came through on the other side, the moment that I saw this woman, I'm like, listen, I'm like, I don't want to go and like, um, I'm like, I don't want to go and like, uh, upset you. I'm like, but I know I'm seeing this. I'm like, but your mother's coming through and she's got like chin hairs. And they started freaking out. They were like, oh my God, oh my God. My she always had chin hairs at the end of her life. She had this, but like that through the past 10 years, they're like, and we never told her, we don't break her heart. We just tried to shave her. And they were telling tell me all these things, but they thought for sure that the mother wouldn't have those chin hairs, right? But because it was a part of her uniqueness and individuality, that's who she is on the other side. So it's the same thing if like Robert De Niro came through and didn't have his mole or Marilyn Monroe didn't come through with that beauty mark, right? You know, this these might th be things that we're insecure of here in this world, but it's what makes us unique. It it's what makes us who we are. And that's what's so cool about our transition to the other side. So the reason why we never die is this. Your soul is made up completely of energy, right? So our body needs to stay alive. Our soul is deep within our body. And our body is keeping us alive while we're here in this world. We have organs, we have a stomach, we have to eat, we have to sleep, we have to pee, we have to poo, we have to do all of those things. Even those you, you ladies always say that you don't poo. All right, I know about that one. But what I want you to know is that once we get to the other side, once we get to the other side, oh, thank you. Wu and spirits advice says you're explaining it perfectly. Well, maybe because you're on the maybe because you're on the spirit spirituality side. I don't know. Maybe maybe you understand it. Sometimes I feel like I talk in circles. But what I want you guys to know is that it's hard to explain this because here in this world we're physical beings, right? Everything in our world is physical. We touch something, it's physical. This book is physical. The microphone, it's physical, right? So to have to go into explain something and explain the spirit world and the spirit side, it's a completely different way of life. It's a completely different body. We enter into a spirit body, right? It's completely different. But what's really cool is this. We don't lose who we are. And that's the reason why when we go to the other side, we're able to transition on so quickly is because heaven is an energy space. Here in this world, we're physical, which is why we have to have these bodies. But when we die, heaven is not a specific place. It's an energy space. So when we leave this world, our energy goes to the other side. And when our energy goes to the other side, what is so beautiful is that we don't have to worry about the human things that we did here in this world. For example, I was asking the spirits this, why is it that we go through sickness, right? Why is it that kids get sick? Like, this is something that really bothers me, you guys. It bothers me to my core. You know, when I always wonder, why is it that, you know, God just can't come, come down and save us from illness? And when I talked to the other side about this, I did my meditations, you know, and I've done all the readings that I've done. You know, this is what I was explained is that here in this world, because we're a physical body, because we're a physical body, we have physical things that can happen to us. We fall and hit our head. We can have a concussion. We break our arm, right? We're not able to, to use it for extended amount of time until it heals, right? We're susceptible on this earth to bacteria and viruses and illnesses like the pandemic and all of these things. But even though, you know, God can't come down and save us here in this world, what I can tell you is that we're all saved once we go to the other side because of the fact that we have that backup version of us. We were never meant to die. Our bodies might stop working, but we take our journey here in this world and we go to the other side. And you know what the souls have also explained to us? Well, explained to me through and you through the readings. They've explained that once we get to the other side, even if we're able to live, even if we're able to live to be 100 years old, let's say 150 years old, right? I don't think anyone's lived to be 150, but let's just say that we can live to 150. That is such a short amount of time, you guys. Such a short amount of time. Like Alexa and I were, you know, we're in the process of moving into a new house. 
And today I had my neighbor over and my neighbor was saying to me, oh my God, Matt, may you get to live 75 years in this house. I'm doing the math, right? Saying, all right, I'm 30 years old right now. So I'm 30 years old right now. That's 105 years old. Oh my God, shit, I only got 75 years left in this world. Like if I make it to 105, right? I better go and get busy. Like there's still a lot for me to do. And that's what the souls always explain to me that once we get to the other side, once we get to the other side, once we get to the afterlife, we realize, oh my God, that wasn't, we, we didn't get to spend hardly any time here on earth. So, you know, the thing is, is knowing this, the thing is, is knowing that once we get to the other side, what truly matters once we die is the connections that we made, because those are the people we're reunited with on the other side, the memories that we made, we're also able to go and to focus on, you know, uh, all of the things, all the lessons that we learned and how we help to change the world before we leave it. So we have a lot of work to do, you guys. Like I said, even if we live to be 150 years old, it is not a lot of time for what our soul is meant to do here in this world. And I think that's the reason why, too, when I talk to the souls, if you notice during readings, how many times people come to me and they're in a full-blown panic? People get so panicked over if they were cremated, if they were buried, if they're, you know, what happened to their ashes, meaning that not, I'm not talking about souls. I'm talking about people who are still living, right? I can't count how many people have come to me in readings and like, nah, my husband must be so mad. Please tell him I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to cremate him. You know, I was going to lay him to rest, but I just couldn't do it. And now, you know, his daughter wanted him cremated. And now I feel like he's upset. I'm going to tell you something. Your loved ones in spirit never come through and talk about the way they were buried, the way they were laid to rest. I mean, it almost never happens unless there's a, specific, a, a significant moment that they want to talk about. But how many readings did I do where somebody was supposed to be buried, but was cremated, was cremated, but was supposed to be buried, didn't, was fearful of being cremated, got cremated, and they don't care on the other side. The reason why is because, you know, when you transition on, when our soul transitions on, we don't care about what happened to our body. You know, we don't care. Like, for example, I don't care what happens to mine, to be honest with you. You know, I care. All, the only thing I care about when I die is what my, what's going to make my family happy. They want me cremated, cremate me. You want to bury me, bury me. You want to put me in a mausoleum? I don't think I need that, but God bless, right? The thing is, is that at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it doesn't mean anything to those souls on the other side because half the time, your loved ones, when they pass on, they don't even realize that they've died. And they've explained it to me like this. If you really want to know what your soul feels like and what it feels like to be a soul, you've all experienced it. Every single one of you have experienced being a soul. I'm going to tell you how you've experienced it through your dreams. When you've, when you had a dream, right? Have you ever guys ever had like a vivid dream and in your dream, you're visiting different places in your dream. You're visiting different people. You don't even realize that you're dreaming. How many of you have had a vivid dream where you're either with a family member that had passed, you're visiting a certain place and your body's going to different, different places. Like meaning like if this is actually called astral projection. Have you ever had that that a dream where maybe in your dream you visited your son's house before it was even purchased? Maybe it is that you saw your future husband in a dream before you got married, right? I see Evil Queen says, yes, me, all the time that happens. I see the Amanda 84 is saying yes. I see Rhonda is saying yes, right? I see Becky Davis is saying yes. If you've had one of those experience, experiences, then that's what your soul feels like. Like people say to me all the time, well, Matt, I don't want to die because I'm going to miss my body. Like, you're not going to miss your body. And they're like, yes, I am. I'm going to miss eating. I'm going to miss drinking. I'm going to be missing doing this. I'm going to be missing this, that, the other thing. I'm like, honey, has anybody, have any of you woken up in a dream and you're like, oh, I missed my body for a second, right? When you're in a dream, you don't even realize that you're dreaming, right? You don't realize that no one's in fear in their dream because they, they're dreaming, right? You might have a bad dream, let's just say. But I'm just saying like, when you go, drip off to sleep and you enter into that dream, it just happens. You don't even realize that it's happening. Half the time you wake up, you didn't even realize it was a dream, right? That happened to me. I'll never forget that. Another story for another day. I'll never forget when I was when I was back in middle school. I dreamt that I was that I was I had a huge crush. I think I think it was like early. I think it was like early out of middle school. I think it was. I had a huge crush on Britney Spears. I had a dream that I was dating Britney Spears. I woke up. I actually thought that I was dating. But anyway. You know what I'm trying to say, right? So that same thing happens when you die. When you die here in this world, right? What's crazy is that we don't even realize it. Like so many people that I talk to will actually go and, or that's a good, that's a good one too. Um, who just said that? Like, for example, um, Carissa, so that feeling of falling abruptly too. Yeah. When you have that dream and you fall, right? You don't even realize it's not even happening. 
That same thing happens. Kiwi's laughing at that. Listen, don't laugh at me. I just tell you, listen, you know me. I get the diarrhea of the mouth. Whatever, whatever comes in, comes out. I'm sorry. But the thing is, is this, I'm just trying to, to try to compare it to you. Every soul that I talk to that has died, that has left this world, has not even realized it was happening, right? They re realized it here in this world. Here in this world, every soul has told me, you know, except for some, has told me, Matt, I was afraid to die. I was afraid to leave this world. I was afraid about this. I was afraid about that. I was so fearful. What if I didn't wake up? What if this didn't happen? Well, what I want you to know is that every soul has told me they closed their eyes here in this world. Originally, they thought they were just dreaming, and then they realized that they have passed away. That's what's so beautiful. And I can't tell you the amount of relief that souls have felt when they were so afraid of dying and so afraid of transition or transitioning over. I can't tell you how fearful some people are of death and dying itself. They're afraid of that word. But what I can tell you is this, is that if you lost a loved one and maybe your loved one was afraid to die, maybe your loved one was go and going in, holding on to that, that, that last moment, holding on to see you, holding on to see a family member, waiting for one last, one last moment, one last second. What I can tell you is this, is that when they got to the other side, it was no longer that they were in fear. Um, who just said that? It's like it's uh cat bottle is basically saying that it's kind of like fly, like flying, right? When you're in a dream. And yeah, I mean, with the other side, when I connect connect with them, is they've told me that when they the, the actual process of death and die was more scary knowing that they were passing than actually when the time came to be. So I want to share that with all of you because. The hardest thing for us as humans is when we lose a loved one and we watch them suffer. When we watch somebody lose their hair, get very old, lose their mind, not be able to remember, not being able to speak, not being able to talk, not being able to walk. But what I can tell you is that on the other side, your loved ones are able to do all of those things. Walk, talk, speak, communicate. Your soul is back to being restored once you get to the other side. And that is what is so beautiful. And it's actually happens a lot with near-death experiences. Near-death experiences teach us a lot about what happens before we die. There's been many people that I've read for that have had near-death experiences and literally, you guys, have experienced this their spiritual body and haven't wanted to come back to this earth. You know, that's, that's to me, so amazing because it shows us that heaven really is a special place. And you may have experienced that as well. Have you ever had the experience where you were in such an amazing dream that you just didn't want to wake up? Has that ever happened to you? Has it ever happened that you just had a dream and in that dream, you felt like, oh my God, that was amazing. Maybe you were visiting Europe. Maybe that, maybe you were going and, um, oh, thank you, Anita. She goes, new wallpaper. Nice. Yes. We're trying it out. If you guys like it, we're going to keep it. And Amanda says, yes, that happened to her. I see that Jamie is, says yes, right? How many of you have had one of those amazing dreams where you just didn't want to wake up? You, you felt so freaking good. And then you woke up and you're like, this freaking life sucks, right? You wake up, maybe you dreamt that you won the Powerball, right? And you had this, and, and, and that you had a nice house, you had a nice car, and you did all these things, right? And then you woke up and you're like, shit, sure, I'm back to my life again, right? Well, that's exactly what happens when we pass on you guys, right? That's the reason why your loved ones here in this world your loved ones here in this world are not, you know, upset on the other side. They're at peace on the other side. And what is so, what brings them the most relief is about the fact that <laughs> I knew someone's going to say this. Oh my God. So Wadi says, yes, I, I, I dreamt of having a man. <laughs> oh, geez. Right like that, the live stream. See what happens? This is why we can't do lives like this. This is why we can't talk about these things. Oh my God. Here we are talking about death and dying and about, about what happens when you dream and how it's like dying. And Zawadi says that she didn't want to wake up because she had it because she dreamt of having a man. Oh my God, you guys. You guys are so funny. <laughs> Richard goes, it's a sip moment. Yes, it is a sip moment. Yep. Oh. She says, listen, she's being honest. Listen, we're not going to fault you for being honest, right? Can't be, can't fault you for being honest. Right? You can't be politically correct when you're telling the truth. It's just the way that it is. We forgive you. We forgive you. So, <laughs> listen, I want to talk. I can't keep my mouth shut to save my soul. Never mind. So, anyways, what I want you guys to know is this, right? Is that when your loved ones get to heaven, one of the biggest reliefs that they have on the other side is that they can actually watch over you. They can actually see you. And not only can they just watch over you, like everyone's like, Matt, what are our loved ones doing on the other side? So, they just, 
sit there and watch over us every day? No. It's a lot more than what your loved ones do. Your loved ones in spirit actually go and not only just watch over you, but your loved ones in spirit help to help you with certain opportunities. I've seen this happen so many times. A daughter that couldn't get pregnant may have lost her mom and by a miracle after losing her mom was able to have a son or a daughter, right? A son who was struggling in his business, his father passed away and suddenly, you know, he meets somebody who is help him help him who helps him to take that business to the next level. Your loved ones can help you by opening doors within your life. <laughs> Kelly goes, "Thank God for coffee, huh?" Oh my God, let me tell you something. For the things I see as a medium, I should be so drinking something a lot stronger than coffee. I should be like, what's that show? The the um the Today Show. You the the Today Show. You know how they're always they're always drinking wine. Now I know why they're always drinking wine on the Today Show. <laughs> so, anyways, that being said, you guys, that's the importance of what actually happens. You know, and I like to think of it this way. You know, how many of you have a device like I do that's on the cloud, right? I could take this phone. It happened the other day where I literally cracked the screen, okay? Went to the Apple store. I was like, I cracked my screen. They said, all right. They swapped the phone right then and there. I signed into iCloud. Boom, all your, all my information was there. Or when you upgrade to a new phone, right? When you upgrade to a new phone, you, you get your new phone. All of a sudden, boom, the information that's on here goes to your phone, goes to your new phone, right? That same thing happens when we die, you guys. It's just an energy transfer. Boom. The same way your phone transfers is what happens when we die. I don't know how the hell it happens, but it happens. So when we leave this world, what's really cool is that that backup storage that we have is able to connect to us right in the afterlife. Everything comes back. It's the coolest thing that I can tell you that I see every day as a medium. So I want to share that with you as well. Oh my God. Thank you, Sherry Lynch, because I love watching you and listening to you. Well, listen, for all of you who are here right now, really important, there's a couple things that you need to know is that if you haven't seen on my Facebook page, you guys, I am so freaking excited about this. I am coming out with a brand new book with Simon and Schuster. It's called Don't Wait Till You're Dead. So by now you may have heard of something called the life review. The life review is what happens when we leave this world. So when we leave this world, and we go to the other side, we go through a life review. And during that life review, we're able to see everything about our life. We're able to see why we were put here on this earth. We're able to see who our soulmate was. We're able to pick our soulmate. We're able to see why we met certain people in our life, why people hurt us, why, who helped us, who was there for us, right? So this new book is all about the life review that happens once you pass away. So this new book is coming out this summer in August. It's being um it's being edited right now. So if you want to pre-order your copy, just go to my website, meetmattfraser.com and click on books. You can get it from Audible, Barnes and Noble, Books A Million, Amazon, anywhere that you buy books. Make sure you have it pre-ordered so you don't forget. And the nice part is, is that most places won't charge you until it ships. One other thing I want to let you guys know is this, is that I'm also coming to give live readings. This is where you can meet me up close and personal. I'm coming to Laughlin, Nevada, to the Edgewater Casino Resort. I'm coming to Santa Rosa, California on November 26th to the Luther Burbank Center. I'm coming to Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, to the Wind Creek Event Center December 7th. Atlantic City, New Jersey, guys, I'll be there December 8th at the Hard Rock Hotel. I'm also coming to Foxwoods Resort Casino in Connecticut on December 9th. Sacramento, California, I'll be there at the Hard Rock Sacramento February 4th. And also, you guys, this is the best kept secret, my Las Vegas shows. February 16th and February 17th, these are the smallest, most intimate events that I do. Everyone thinks Las Vegas, and they think it's going to be a huge show. You guys, if you're looking for a more, smaller, intimate setting, you got to come and meet me live in Las Vegas. These events take place in a small, tiny showroom inside the Venetian. So if you want to come and join me, just go to meetmattfraser.com. And you guys, I can't believe it. The end of the year is among us. It is almost that time. I can't believe that this year is almost over, you guys. It's crazy. What I want you to know is this, is that for all of you guys who have been wanting a reading with me, if you can't make it to see me live on tour, I want you guys to know that there's only two online readings left with me for this year. Okay. December 29th and December 30th. Those are the last online readings of the year. Everything else is sold out. So if you've been to my website, meetmattfraser.com, take a look at this. This is the online reading page. Everything is sold out. Look at this. Sold out, sold out. I don't know if you guys can see that. Sold out, sold out, sold out, sold out. 
Sold out. Why can't it, you see that? Sold out, sold out, sold out. I only have these two dates left before the end of the year, December 29th and December 30th. And sadly, sadly, you guys, come next year, I'm not going to be doing as many online readings because I'm going to be um, touring more to reach more of you guys and to see you in your cities and states. So if you want to join me for a live online reading, a tour day, or to pre-order that new book, just go to meetmattfraser.com. That's where everybody living and dead can find me. And remember one thing. You are never alone. You have angels, loved ones, and spirit guides always with you. And one day, when you when you pass on, not for many, many years, but when you pass on, you will realize why you were put here on this earth. And there's a reason for that, because you are special. That's the reason why you were created. That's the reason why your soul is here. And you are meant to do good things. And you've changed the world in some way. What's crazy is that we don't realize it. We don't realize it while we're here. We think that we're just a small footprint, and one day we're going to be forgotten. But I can tell you that even the foot, the smallest footprint has the biggest impact and your life, your life is something that is so meaningful because once you get to the other side, you're going to see how you inspired other people, how other people inspired you. And more importantly, you're going to realize why you were put here on earth. We all will, including myself. So that's something that I really want to share with you. Thank you so much. Woo and spirits advice I'm going to get your, I'm going to get your book. Thank you so, so much. And thank you, Karez, for being here as well. I love seeing so many of you. And yes, Heidi, I see you're here as well. Thank you so much for, for tuning into this. So don't forget, I'm here live nightly here on Facebook and YouTube and everywhere else. So thank you guys so much for joining me. And remember one thing, there is no such thing as death. Your loved ones are always with you and they go where you go. Their soul is only just a thought away. So when you want to speak to a loved one, all you have to do is think about them, right? The, uh, think about them, think a message to them. Or, or speak out loud and your loved one will hear you right at that exact moment. So I hope you'll do that because if there's one thing I know, it's that your loved ones in spirit love hearing from you just as much as you love hearing from them. So that being said, have a great night. Talk to your loved ones and remember they are always with you, even when you don't sense and feel them. I'll see you.